All right, this video will explore the Hindu method for solving quadratics, which is basically completing the square and the quadratic formula, but it looks a little bit different and something that I've never really thought of or seen before. Now, where did this come from? Well, I have an old math book collection, and I was looking in my uh, Ray's, Ray's Algebra. So here's the title page of this book. It's, uh, it's Ray's Algebra, first book. And Joseph Ray was the, the, and here he's the late professor of mathematics at Woodward College, which is, uh, was connected to Woodward High School in Cincinnati and all that business. Um, this book is copywritten in 1866, which is right here, it says 1866. But one thing that really uh, jumped out at me is the fact that I finally paid attention and like looked in the beginning of the book and spent some time uh, reading uh, who had this book and if you can make it out it's Israel uh, Hollingsworth and I'm pretty sure that's right I even googled his name and tried to trying to find him and I, I made reference to him in a couple of different places in uh, in Ohio in 1831 and then I saw his name in a couple of different places but there's a couple of different of them that could be son, sons or 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 family members and so I haven't quite narrowed down where where he is um, but the date in that he wrote in here was January 20th um, 1870 I really wish um, that I had remembered where I got this book from some antique store or something like that but for the first time I, I've seen this before so as I was saying I've seen this before here but I never picked up the book until yesterday and flipped to the back, the very back of the book, which just really um, I thought was really cool. This is a ink stamp that was put into the book from R. B. Strong, a dealer in uh, drugs, patent medicines, uh, paints, oils, varnish, glass, wall, and window papers school books and stationery, Jamestown, Ohio. And Jamestown, Ohio is north of Hillsboro. Um, and it's go up uh, Ohio 72. And it's right there. You go through Jamestown, um, uh, Ohio. And I actually Googled his name and found that he passed away in, I believe, 1895 because it was in the notes from some uh, pharmacist uh, manual or something like that, or pharmacist, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, like a association, a pharmacy association, and he um, is listed in there as being deceased. Uh, so, like I said, the the graphics on this are really kind of cool. Uh, let me let me get a little bit closer, even so I get right like this, and there we go. And I hit the focus button. So the graphics are really really quite. Uh, incredible on this and it's still together so my theory is um, since I have reference of a man in Jamestown in 1831 I think he, the the uh, uh, Hollingsworth bought this book later in life um, and wrote his wrote his name in it and the it's in really excellent shape um, for a book of this age and I don't think he used it very much like not a, a real kid used this book anyway um, I, I found a cool thing in here that I've never seen before and it's how to solve a quadratic using the Hindu method now one thing that's interesting well we'll, we'll start here on this page they refer to quadratics uh, two different ways they talk about quadratics being a pure quadratic which basically means that there's only x squared in the equation, so it's a pure quadratic, and then the uh, affected quadratics, which have the extra x uh, to uh, make it harder to solve instead of just taking a square root, you got to do something else to it. But the Hindu method will solve any um, quadratic. Now the Hindu method is on this page here, and it has two O's in Hindu, and that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, well, what's going on with that? That's, but, you know, I'm a math teacher, so I'm like, that's not the way you spell Hindu. Um, this is an archaic spelling of Hindu since this is an old book and it goes through and you start off with your quadratic uh, in uh, AX squared plus BX plus C form and you go through the process of basically completing the square in a, in a fancy way and you end up with the thing that looks like a quadratic formula but they don't really call it the quadratic formula. I notice it's uh, 4AC plus uh, B squared instead of B squared minus 4AC. 
but it'll solve any 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 quadratic with this this different way of completing the square. So if you want to pause it on this page and you could read the page, um, the the Ray's algebra has been since it's out of copyright. The Google people have put this whole book on on Google, um, so you can look at this page if you want to yourself. All right, so I think that gets the whole page pretty much. Yeah. There's the whole page. You could pause it and read this if you if you wanted to. All right, so let's do an example with the uh, Hindu method. The Hindu method. Now I, I looked this up, um, and it, like I said, it's an archaic way. And I, I found this graphic on the internet, which is kind of cool. Um, the the usage of Hindu with two O's versus Hindu with the U. So this is it's hard to read here. That's uh, 1750, and this is. Uh, 1950 and then 2000 so every 50 years is marked off here and the, the red shows how the two O's has disappeared and the uh, use of U has, has grown and one thing I read on the internet is the fact that the, the two O's is actually considered like uh, culturally and, and insensitive or something like that I, I have no I no idea and, and I'm sure mr. Ray didn't mean anything back in the day um, because it's like I said it's an archaic way which was about in oh, let's see 1866 so it looks like it peaked in here again and that was really used a lot um, during this time all right so let's do the Hindu method for solving um, quadratics so the first thing we need to do is we may need to make up a quadratic. And I'm going to prove to you that it works for any, any uh, quadratic here. Whoops. Man, I need to get rid of all these calculations here. Clear, clear. There we go. Finally got rid of it. So I'm going to go to math and um, probability. And I'm going to go over to random integer. And I'm going to generate, um, well, I generate a negative 10 to 10. The numbers get kind of big there. Let's just change it to negative five to five. And I want three numbers. And then paste. There's my three numbers. So my three numbers are uh, negative five, five, and three. So I'm gonna do negative five x squared um, plus five x uh, minus three plus three is equal to zero. So these are my random integers that I use right there. Negative five, five, and three. <clears throat> so I've never really liked working with a, uh, with a being anything but a positive number. So I'm gonna get rid of the negative by multiplying everything by negative one. Okay, then we're gonna put it in the form that it was in in the book. So I move the three over. All right, now I'm going to complete the square in this. And what's cool about this, you don't have to have this being one, you can just leave it as five. So what you do is you multiply everything by four times a. So you need, we're gonna multiply everything by, um, a is five, so we're gonna multiply everything by 20. So everything gets get multiplied by 20. So it'd be 100 x squared minus 100. Ooh, that's an easy thing to multiply by. And then over here I get uh, 60. All right. Now what we do is we um, square the b term. So that's the sec second thing is do. We add b squared to each side. So step one is to multiply everything by this, and then step two is to add b squared to every side. So we don't do go to this b, we go back to this b here, which is negative uh, five, and we square that. So I'm gonna add 25 to each side. Whoops, I lost my x. Add 25 to each side. Now, this is a perfect square trinomial. So why, this is why this works, so 85. And so we get 10, um, 10 x, and 10x and then minus 5 and minus 5 so that'd be negative 50 yep that's the way it factors so it factors into 10x minus 5 squared is equal to 85 and then we take the square root of each side so we get 10x minus 5 is equal to uh, plus or minus square root of 85 and then we add the 5 over so 10x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 85 
and then we divide everything by 10. So we get x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 85 over 10. So there's the answer. Now, what if I had just done this um, with the quadratic formula? So the quadratic formula, so if I started right here with the quadratic formula, I would have uh, I would have a is equal to 5, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to negative 3. So then uh, I would have x equals negative b, so it would be 5 plus or minus the square root over 2a, which would be 10. And then I got to do b squared um, minus 4a, which is 5, and c, which is negative 3. And I don't need this extra parentheses in there, so I'm going to kill that. All right. There we go, and squared. So I have x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root. Um, this would be 25 plus 20. It'd be 20 times 3 would be 60 over 10. So I get x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 85 over 10. And isn't that what I had before? Yep. It matches. So whether it's the quadratic formula or, um, or this hin Hindu method here, uh, it works for all quadratics. Anyway, these old math books are treasures, and I like flipping through them and seeing what there is to see.